As I went down to the river to pray, studying about them good old ways, and who shall wear the robe and crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down now, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about them. Studying about them good old ways And who shall wear the robe and crown Good Lord, show me the way Oh, fathers, let's go down Let's go down, come on down Oh, fathers, let's go down Down to the river to pray As I went down to the river to pray Studying about that good old way And who shall wear the robe and crown down to the river to pray studying about that good old way and who shall wear the robe and crown good lord show me the way oh sinners let's go down let's go down come on down oh sinners let's go down down to the river to pray Good morning, church. Welcome. I am Peter Narmita, here with my wife, Londa, and my daughter, Tara Williamson, and we're connecting with you from Los Altos, California. Hi. Our God calls on us to love as Jesus loves. Welcome in the name of Jesus, the vine grower. We worship here at Aldersgate United Methodist Church. We are happy and grateful you're with us. All are welcome here. Please say hello in the comments. Please join us as all in our call to worship. We gather together to worship our God. God gathers us as God's chosen people, and we abide in God's love. We enter worship with glad hearts, eager to love and serve God. Christ has loved us completely and fully. We abide in Christ's love. We praise the maker of heaven and earth, whose love spreads to all of creation. Creation is a gift to all, and we are entrusted to care for the good earth. Creation abides in our love. We honor the light, the dark, and the hues between. God makes all beautiful. Life in its fullness holds great joy and great pain. We are witnesses to the depth of love that fills our days. We abide in the joy of love. Let us pray. God of many blessings, we give thanks for this day. We give thanks for all that life holds. And we give you thanks for your steadfast love, for your faithfulness, and for your justice. We gather to worship you, share our joy, and receive your love. Be, Be with, with us now, now and, and always. always. Amen. Amen.
Hi friends, it's Miss Jen and I'm back here for another children's time. This week's Psalm, Psalm 98, talks about earth singing joyful songs of praise to God. What are some ways the earth sings? I would love to see some of your ideas in the comment section on Facebook. To help us make joyful noises though, I thought that we could make shakers. So dig out one of the plastic Easter eggs from Easter and then you can fill it and you can fill it with beans or rice. I used these little beads that I had, craft beads that I had, and then you just simply put it in your egg. All of the different items will make different noises. And of course, you'll want to make sure that you tape or glue them shut so you don't make a mess. But this will help us make some joyful noises. And then once you get your shakers ready, you can make up a song or a dance to express your joy. Maybe an act of gratitude for God, for your moms. Will you pray with me? Mother and God, we make joyful noises of our love and deep gratitude. Help us sing these praises with the earth. Amen. Bye, church. The flowers this morning is an offering from the Freydines in memory of their mothers, Agnes and Elizabeth. Let us pray. Loving and faithful God, we are called to imagine a more loving world, a world where each is treated with mutual respect, where everyone has their daily bread. We are called to imagine a world in which people have fair housing, food for daily living, and care for health and well-being. 
We witness the despair and destruction of lives through abuse, abandonment, and neglect. We see the lonely, despairing, and those who have lost all hope. We pray for those in grief that your abiding presence would grant them peace at this time. We pray for Sheila and her desire for herself and her families to be healed after the tragic death of her daughter, Beth. May the power of your resurrection guide Sheila, Beth's siblings of this generation and future generations so that wounds are healed and lives are restored. We trust in your eternal love for your beloved Beth, who now rests in peace. Help us always to remember that you chose us first and to witness to the love and hope we experience through Christ. May our living usher hope into the spaces we inhabit. We pray for our communities, our schools, our healthcare facilities, and all who serve in caring professions and emergency services. We remember nurses with gratitude and joy during this Appreciation Week. We pray for social workers and teachers during this Appreciation Month, as well as administrators. And for those in the hospitality industry who clean and care for our parks and public spaces, we pray for sanitation workers and transportation drivers, for the people we encounter daily whose lives intersect our own. We pray for those who serve silently and are not encountered, whose work keeps them from view. We pray for the conflicts and concerns of our wider world. We pray for the people of India this week. We pray for those whose safety is in question and those who do not know where or when they will taste their next meal. We pray for those in war-torn spaces and for the health and safety of the vulnerable of every age and stage of life. Loving and faithful God, we are called to live in love. Help us during this celebration of AAPI Heritage Month to remember what love lived looks like. May our words build up our community and serve to create a more loving world. May our actions help to bridge the gaps between us. We pray that our actions and attitudes are your commandments lived in action. Be in our eyes, our hands, our feet, our minds, and our hearts, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.
Hello again, church. We are back, bringing you God's word. Draw near and hear the continuation of last week's gospel story, telling of the joy of God's love from the writer of John, chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. We are reading from the Inclusive Bible. As my Abba has loved me, so have I loved you. Live on in my love, and you will live on in my love if you keep my commandments, just as I live on in Abba God's love and have kept God's commandments. I tell you all this, that my joy may be yours and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And you are my friends. If you do what I command you, I no longer speak of you as subordinates because a subordinate doesn't know a superior's business. Instead, I call you friends because I have made known to you everything I have learned from Abba God. It was not you who chose me. It was I who chose you to go forth and bear fruit. Your fruit must endure so that whatever you ask of Abba God in my name, God will give you. This command I give you, that you love one another. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. 잘 지냈어요? Is Korean for what in English would be translated as, how are you? And you know how when we ask people, how are you? That depending on the relationship and the context that both the question and response can be different. The standard casual response, I'm fine and how are you? is an exchange that both parties find is all that they either need and or want. However, in intimate conversations and amongst friends, our questions and answers are nuanced more deeply. This simple question, 잘 지냈어요? or 잘 지냈어? In Korean, both questions mean the same, just depending on who is asking who and depending on the relationship, it is either a formal way of asking or an informal way of asking. For example, between the relationship of an older and younger person, the formal would be used by the younger to the older. The elder can use the less formal way. If you are listening to people talking, it can be helpful in figuring out the relationship. So depending on if you are the mother or child, two close friends, two acquaintances, a supervisory person and the supervised professor and student, and in church culture between like the bishop and clergy. The Korean language can reveal much about the relational nature of the people communicating. And if you ever watch Korean movies, you will often hear this phrase, often in very dramatic fashion, because more than the literal words, the words are laden with emotions and meaning. The question, 잘 지냈어요? or 잘 지냈어? is a very nuanced question depending on the relationships and the context. The word is pregnant with emotional meaning, often birthing meaning in the silence after and without any necessary response, and maybe because no words can express a response adequately. Often the scene in movies with this question has lots of tears between the parties as well as tears from the viewers. The question, 잘 지냈어요, is difficult to translate because it's interpreted within the context. If you translated it literally, it's not so much like, how are you, which is a very present tense question, but it literally is asking more like, have you been well through the passing of time? Or have you passed, spent the time well? It's the inexpressible or maybe the unexplainable nature of whatever passed through that passage of time and the other's experiences that cannot all be said in words in that moment, yet understood because of the relational nature of love between the two people. It can be nuanced to be asking in some ways, is our relationship well? Even though time has been spent, passed, and we've been absent from one another's presence. Nuanced in the question is possibly, are we well together? 
Has our love endured the time spent apart, yet still bound up together in one another's wellness? The gift of offering one another this question can be an act of love in and of itself. The asking alone sometimes is redeeming of all that was lost in the absence of one another and in the time that has passed. Sometimes the question releases grief, grief that cannot be put into words. For example, when a Korean mother asks this question to a daughter who immigrated to the U.S. and they are now meeting after over like a decade of being apart, they ask one another, 잘 지냈어요? or 잘 지냈어? It's possible that nuanced in that question is a shared grief that both the mother and daughter are now different people that they missed out in being together through the hardships of transitions, challenges and struggles, times of loss and grief, as well as times of celebrations and joy. The question is inclusive of all that has been missed, physically separated, and also the gift of their interrelatedness, of their love and its steadfastness, and desires for the well-being for one another. There are many examples of different relationships and contexts. The greeting between a surrogate parent and the adoptive parent, after nine months of pregnancy and birthing, they greet one another, 잘 지냈어요? Both parents are arriving into the present moment with both a shared and a different kind of journey. The question translated into English as, how are you, is too simplistic. In that relationships and contacts, and in the Korean language, it carries within the question so much more. The desire that the other's journey through what is now the past, time spent, and arriving into the present moment together has been a journey of being well, blessed, provided, washed, pruned, grown to bear fruit, fruition in the arrival, joy. Still, another example, another kind of relationship and different context, a mother released from being incarcerated, being met by her adult children on her release. They greet one another, the mother to the children, 잘 지냈어? The children to the mom, 잘 지냈어요? In the exchange of the question, pregnant with all that could have been, may be stillborn in one another's lives. The shame, the guilt, the brokenness, and the suffering. Often in Korean movies, these questions are exchanged over their first shared meal together, something about eating together, reflecting faithfulness and desire for wellness for one another and together, feeding, nurturing, sustenance for one another, and honoring what the relationship was, is, and may be in the future. So often in Korean drama movies, Koreans are crying and eating together. I imagine there was much tears at the feast for the prodigal child arriving home, so well known in our biblical stories, for the journey those who stayed at home as well as the child returning, the joy and tears of when the one lost sheep, a part of the wholeness of the flock of 99, broken until the one is brought home, the joy of the community of sheep and the shepherd, and probably in our pandemic, maybe some of us can relate best to when we see our moms and our children and grandchildren after a year of being physically separated by the pandemic. 잘 지냈어요? 잘 지냈어? And for some of us, we may be asking this question as we revisit the cemetery where some of our mothering and fathering and parenting and friends who now rest in eternal peace and in God's glory. And for some of us, this question is still not yet possible and still arriving and in God's future. As you can see, relationships and context are important to understanding and making meaning. Today's reading in John 15, a continuation of last week's readings in the same chapter. I like to expand on understanding the importance of relationships and context. Last week, I shared the context in which the words, the metaphor, I am the true vine, was said by Jesus. 
It was in the context after washing the disciples' feet when he said, abide in me as I abide in you. The understanding is that they would bear much fruit as those already washed and pruned. It was before his arrest and before he was killed, buried, and rose again and his ascension. Jesus understood a time was coming in which he would not be physically present to the disciples and with whom his relationship was changing to one in which he calls them his friends. In today's readings, Jesus, on that same night after breaking bread and sharing meal with the disciples, commands them to love one another as he loved them. He says he has shared all these so that his joy may be in them and that their joy may be complete. In reading the scriptures, we need to keep in mind that really there are three different contexts to keep in mind when we read the words and in order to interpret the words as meaningful and relevant for our lives today. The first and immediate context of today's story is in the context of Jesus' life right after Jesus washed the disciples' feet before his impending death to a community of his first followers before Christianity was even known as Christianity. The second context is when the Gospel of John was likely written. Scholars would say written in a community living three generations after Jesus' earthly ministry in which the community is under persecution as community of early Christians who lived very differently from the dominant culture, politically, socially, economically, and religiously. And the third context is us reading this story in the 21st century in which being Christian comes from a history of being the dominant religion unlike what it was in the context of Jesus's and or the Johannine community. Our political, social, economic, and religious context is different. And this pandemic has made our context even more unique. So when we hear the words of Jesus, for example, no one has greater love than this to lay one's life for one's friends. It will mean very different things. It meant probably something very different for the disciples who watched Jesus crucified, a form of capital punishment in the Roman Empire. It would mean something very different for the Johannine community, remembering this story three generations after. And for us here in 2021 in this pandemic, Maybe laying one's life for another seemed like something we could do by practicing overabundance of caution, not gathering in worship, and wearing a mask, for example. In our modern context, we had people feeling like wearing a mask was a huge burden, when in truth, practicing love for one another is Christ's joy made complete in us. It was before Jesus' arrest and death that he said, I have said these things to you so that my joy may be complete in you and that your joy may be complete. Again, different meaning from the perspective of the first disciples to the first Christian community being formed generations later and to us today. Love one another looks different in action in different contexts. The word for love used in the commandment that Jesus gave to his disciples comes from the Greek word agape. The word love translated from the Greek word agape to Latin is caritas. And it's the root word for which we have our English word charity, grace, gifts. In our Christian traditions, we have an understanding that love is not only a feeling of exaltation that we can experience in prayers and praise and worship together in person, but an understanding that love is practiced as way of life, a discipleship. It's the practice of disciplined habits of care and concern, and like all virtues, it can be perfected over a lifetime. In our current context of the pandemic and as we transition once again to what will be announced this coming week with our churches being able to return to hybrid worship and in-person worship, what does it mean to love one another as a habit of care and concern? What does the practice of grace, charity, gift, and love look like? In the different relationships and contexts of today's readings, Jesus also says to the disciples, you did not choose me, but I chose you. 
Can you imagine what those words meant for the disciples as their life began to unravel soon after? What powerful words to remember later when they felt like sheep without a shepherd, a reminder that God's providential care was promised. And for the community of John, generations later as Christians facing persecution, experiencing fragmentation of their communities, hearing these words and remembering the generation of saints that had gone before them and how Christ chose them might give them the assurance that they now needed to stand steadfast and faithful. In our 21st century in America, we can see how these same words of chosenness has been problematic as it is often misused by Christians to oppress those they deem as less than chosen and or to live as if chosenness gives Christianity the right to colonize other nations and persecute other religions in the name of Christ. So through the three different relationships and contexts that our readings today speaks, we can see both how people then and us today encounter struggles or oppositions like the community of John and Jesus and how these have been different. In those and these times, we are reminded that God first chose us, and so in spite of whatever powers of oppositions that make us feel like we're not those God loves, whatever our contacts may be, remembering God chose us and loved us is relevant and meaningful. I was reminded on this Mother's Day weekend, people who have been mothering me throughout my life, some in more intimate relationships, some as short-term mentors, teachers, guides, as together those accompanying one another. I remember an older clergywoman, now retired, and who I hope has been and is well through this pandemic, who in my spirit I pray the question, Her name is Reverend Tilda Norberg. And as an ordinance, we spent a number of retreat sessions with her. And she shared with some woman like myself, processing towards ordination, that right after her ordination, the bishop at the time, Bishop Wilkie, told her that he was not going to place another woman in ministry because he had enough trouble placing the two he already ordained. Needless to say, Reverend Norberg served fruitfully for decades, impacting many lives, not just women, but men as well. She mothered me to remember that God first chose and loved us. Whatever the context you find yourself in today, remember that God first loved and chose you. Because of God's choosing us, we also receive the gift of joy Joy is the byproduct of relationship we have God and Christ choosing to love us first. To the disciples who will be left orphan, alone, and afraid after his death, Jesus' word to abide in him and that he chose them first is important and graces them with courage to face their challenges and also for the community of John's and us today to renew our strength, to trust that it is God who loves the world and all that it is in it, including us, as well as those we think are not or could possibly not be chosen. May we remain steadfast and faithful in our love of one another that is graced in and through God's love for us. May it be so. Amen.
it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me? As we go, let us go knowing that God loves us. May Christ's light guide your path. May peace grace each step. May hope lead the way. May you always find love near. Amen.